All right, there's a couple things we're going to cover right now. One, we're going to break the entire subframe out and um, take a lot of the parts off, stuff that we've never done in another video. So whether you're putting a trigger into your gun or if you just want to learn how to do it, this video is going to be good for you. However, I am going to take this upgraded trigger out of this gun and then I'm going to put it back in as if I was putting it in from scratch. Um, meant to film this video when we first put this in, but we were a little too busy. So we're just going to take it out and then put it back in so you guys can learn how to do it. All right, taking your gun apart, just pull your takedown pin out. Get yourself a punch like this. I don't know, what is that? That's probably like three millimeter punch, something like that. I use a roll of tape because that's what I got laying around. There goes one pin. It's very easy to take this down. There's two pins. All right, one pin is a little bit shorter than the other one. That's the one in the front, and that's the one in the rear. If I didn't tell you that, maybe you'd have done what I did and put them in backwards. <laughs> that sucks. So shorter one up front, longer one in the rear. Okay, now here comes the subframe. Now, when you pull this out, just don't pull it out. Put your hands around it whenever you're working on your gun because you don't want your springs to fly around across the room and land somewhere where you'll never find it unless you pull out magnets and scour the place. Ask me how we know that. Okay, there's our uh, slide release, slide lock. Stay organized too, stay very organized. I don't even know what this thing is called, but it's on the wall. It's in your manual. Here's the spring spring for your slide release, slide lock. That's what makes it spring back into place. Here's our sear, our connector. Okay, so there's a there's a couple little springs here. See this one? That guy's ready to freaking jump out right now. I'm gonna go ahead and just take him out because I don't want him to come out on its own and fly across the room here in a second. And, oh, okay, tools that you need. This punch, I'm also going to use, well, any kind of little screwdriver will work just like this. Ow, see, there's a lot of force on that. That little guy came out. Now I want to take this one here. There's this one here, this pin. Okay, so I'm going to take this one out. There we go, pin on the side. Okay, now everything should just pretty much come apart, no problem. First thing I'm gonna do is, this is another good tool to have when you're doing working on your, if you're working on your trigger in particular, it's a very good tool to have. Da -da -da. I'm just gonna take these suckers out, dude. There's one pin, this one has like a, a nail type of head on it. And you can tell where these go because they'll be um, camphored or chamfered, whatever the word is. Now I'm taking this bar out behind the trigger uh, spring and whatever that piece is called. Okay. Just use this little screwdriver. Should just come right on out. There we go. There's the upgraded trigger. Took that out. Here's the um, trigger spring and the trigger. Uh, so this is a trigger spring right there. Okay. Trigger spring and then the trigger. I'm going to look at the board. What is that? Because that kind of drives me crazy. 36 is trigger spring rod. Trigger spring rod. So when you get. That thing's empty. Let me pull this apart real quick before I get into anything else. Okay, there's a little pin in there. To get this out, there's a spring right inside here. Actually, it's right underneath that piece. That piece, if you get in close on that, please, Jeff, is connected to this piece. So the only way for us to slide this thing out this way is to move it over there first because the sear has to clear 
this part right here of the frame, the subframe. So the technique is I take my fingernail, I'm going to get it out of the way, then I'm going to turn it over. So I got my fingernail. See, there's a sear on the other side. I'm going to get it out of the way. Then I'm going to put my finger, like I'm playing a guitar, over that hole because there's a spring in there. I don't want that to fly out. And then I'm going to take my punch and that pin right there, That's there's a pin. You'll see it when it comes out here in a second. I'm going to push down on that pin, push this entire piece this way. When that bar moves out, that spring's going to fly out. It's going to look just like that almost. Boom, let's do the damn thing. Actually, before we do that, I almost forgot. Smaller punch. I'm going to see this pin right there. That needs to come out before that can come out. This guy right here. It's another one of those nail looking deals. There it is, right there. Okay, that guy. Now we can do the technique. Fingernail, pull it over, finger in front of that because that thing's going to fly out, and press down right here. Aha, uh -huh. hear that? Okay, here we go. There's the sear. And then there's that spring in your detent, whatever. That's what makes this thing return back into a safe position. Obviously, when you pull the trigger, disconnector is going to hit right there, slide it out of the way. This piece moves, and then the striker is allowed to go. Spring returns it back to a safe position. Um, that's it. That's totally broken down right. You can't break that down any further. I like to take brake cleaner or whatever and just... We just did that the other day. Didn't do a super good cleaning, but cleaned out most of it. Brake cleaner, whatever, blah, blah, blah. All right, putting this back together. So if you if you got a trigger kit like this, this obviously replaces your entire old trigger, you know, right here. That replaces that entire piece. What would be in your trigger kit is going to be a new trigger spring that goes right in there, a new spring that goes into here for your um, sear the pressure on the sear and you're gonna get one of these little tiny allen keys to adjust it for over travel which we're gonna do on this gun here in just a few seconds all right let's um, I don't know if there's anything else to cover on this oh one other thing I get this call all the time if this piece of plastic right here is all smashed up it's okay I know that sounds weird but that was meant just for the subframe to go into exactly the right spot. And then um, certain ammo that you run or whatever, the slide comes back, the, actually the guide rod and spring, or it's a locking block hits here, and it'll get smashed up. I had a customer that had his gun that locked to the rear and you didn't know what was wrong with it. Told him to take it apart. He hit the back of the thing with a mallet and then it was just a little piece of that plastic that got stuck in there. By the way, salient on their tier one strike ones, they take all that off before it even gets to you because this was a small design flaw. All right, so if that gets chewed up, don't worry about it. That was only meant for this to go into the right spot and I don't think anyone ever thought with certain ammo that that would get smashed. Okay, uh, the only other thing you could take apart is your mag release. We're not gonna mess with that. I have another video on that. Let's put this aside and let's put this back together. I remember how to do that. Okay, first things first, the large spring would go in there. Then your detent would go there. And one thing to realize on your trigger kit, this might be when you stick this into that hole right there, it might go in tight, real tight. When you press it all the way down, it may not move freely. So this is a gunsmithing on our website we talked about. Not really gunsmithing, but you just gotta fiddle with it. I take a little piece of uh, sandpaper and I put it in my fingers. If it's too big, if it's too tight, I put it in my, put the sandpaper around it and I do that number. I get that down about a thousandth of an inch and then I try it. it, takes about 10 minutes, then put it back in the hole, 
if it moves around, I'm going to take this out and show you what it should move around like. So these guys are, these guys are out. Okay. That one's more of a flat type of blunt head. This one's more of a rounded one. This one goes in your, trig your trigger and your trigger spring up here. This guy goes in, in here. You put it in there and it should just move freely. If it does not move freely, then you know you have to take some material off of this. The other thing that will happen is when this goes in there, the other gunsmithing thing, when this goes in there and you put it all back together, this pin has to go from this side all the way through here. So it's gonna intersect basically, that pin is going to intersect that divot, that pin keeps this in place from coming out. So when I take this material down and I put it back in there, I don't even put the springs in yet. I'll put this in first, then I put the pin in. Because I want to make sure that that little detent, that little divot in there is large enough to accept. This is going to go inside the gun and it's going to go right inside that divot there. And that's going to rotate on that and that's what's going to keep this from coming back out. Okay, That has to be large enough. Some of these drop right in, everything works perfectly like this one. Some of them, I just take my Dremel with a fine sand on it. And you can look through it. Once this is in here, gosh, I don't want this video to be too long, damn it. But once it's in there, you can look through that hole and you can see exactly the tiny bit, 10 thousandths of an inch, whatever it is that's sticking out. Because you can't see the light. It looks like a, a perfect circle and then a little piece on the bottom. All you do is look at that, make a note of it. It's going to be the same for everyone. And when this is in there, it's basically, this is the back of the gun, it's going to be down at 5 o'clock. So it's that little lip right down there at the bottom. Don't worry about making it deeper or doing the top. You just want to take a few thousandths off the bottom of that divot right there. Okay? One last thing that you will have to likely do. That is normally a very sharp corner just like this. Dremel. 10 seconds and take that right down right there. Otherwise, that piece will not get past that little triangle piece right there. Guys, girls, don't be nervous about doing this job. You can send the gun to me. I'll do it for 100 bucks. Takes probably about an hour total to do it. Um, maybe an hour and a half. If it's your gun, it's an hour and a half. If I'm doing it to my gun, it's an hour. I care more about your guys' guns than mine. All right, so that little corner has to come off. Otherwise, that is not, because that's as far down as it can go. And if that corner was there, obviously it's going to hit it. It will not go seat in. So let's put it back together now. First things first. This one. Okay, putting it together. Drop in the large spring right in there. In your trigger kit, you're gonna have, it's gonna be a different one. Make sure you keep all the new parts from your trigger kit over here and all the old parts, put them in a little, put them off to the side or put them in a Tupperware. You don't wanna reuse those. You will reuse this and you will reuse that, but you will get two new springs, okay? Then I'm gonna drop that in there, just like so. Then I'm gonna take this and I'm just gonna put it in the hole a little bit right there. And now I'm gonna take my bigger punch I'm gonna push that all the way down so that that piece is on top of them. Push that all the way down, slide that in. This piece is gonna be over that and then I can just kind of like let it be. Be careful, once you get it down there, do not let it go. Okay, now my finger's over it. There we go. Just like we drew it up. Once that part is in, Take your little pin with the nail head on it. That goes back in, that part's done, we're good to go. Now we gotta put the trigger back in. And someone asked me, can you, man, I really want, I got a great trigger job, but can I want this 
on the old trigger. And you know what? Every part in here is exactly the same. Why wouldn't it work? That pin's the same size, it's in the same exact location. I mean, it has to be because all the other pieces, the trigger bars, they're all exactly the same. So you could get a trigger kit if you love the custom trigger job that you have and then just put this smaller shoe on it. Tell you what, I'm gonna hit up uh, our boy Dimitri and be like, dude, just send me, I just need just those shoes for customers, okay? Oh, and here's a good look at how much thinner the trigger face is. Six, mil six five and a half millimeters versus nine. Same width in the back, just flatter, five and a half millimeter versus nine, so almost, almost twice as small. And then finally, when we get the trigger in there, we're gonna adjust it for the over travel. How cool is that? That's gonna be super sweet. All right, damn, how do I do this? I forget. All right, let's get it like so. I'm gonna drop this in here, put that up in its place right there. Cool, so far so good. Get this out of the way, because the next thing that has to go in is this little spring, the trigger spring is in, and then the trigger rod. goes in okay if you put the bars in this trigger in first because they're actually one of these pins this big pin it's going to go right through that hole right there if you do that first this trigger won't go back far enough for you to get this piece in right here so now I can feel the tension the trigger rod and the trigger spring are going into the hole right there and I'm going to compress it look through and make sure all the holes are lined up and then I'm gonna put that bar in there. But I'm only gonna put this bar in here that far. If you put it any further, you're gonna be in trouble. So I'm gonna put it in that far. If you go too far, don't worry, you can always push it out a little bit, but that's where we're gonna to wanna to stop and then I'll show you where we're gonna continue. So let's look right here. Looking good. Take that pin again here okay so I'm gonna push this in all right there we go okay so you can see I went a little bit too far so I'm gonna pull it out a little bit right there okay this spring right here just remember that, that spring, that's like your trigger return spring, that has to go behind everything, all these two bars that we're gonna put back in, it has to go behind them. So you wonder why I've been using this. I'm gonna grab the spring with that hole and pull it back, then I'm gonna push the pin all the way through. See what I'm saying? Now I got the pin behind the bar, now I can just play with the trigger a little bit. Actually, I'm gonna take some force off of this guy right there, because it's that guy is wanting to push everything crooked, so I gotta push that in. Now I got the pin in. Cool. Now what do I do, Jeff? Jeff's been learning how to do this. Now I'm gonna take this bar, get that all up in its place. You can start to feel how your trigger is going to feel a little, a little bit. Now what I want to do is I want to take this one and this one's going to go in. can go in either side. This one has to go behind that so you just pull the trigger a little bit, compress it. Now I have room for it. All right, now once again, a little too far, because this trigger, that little spring, return spring, has to go behind this bar also. There we go. Feeling pretty good. So if I hold up the connector, now you can see how it's interfacing your new uh, sear. And this all is looking legit. That little tiny return spring is behind everything. Got my pins in there right. There we go, make sure they're all flush. Now what? 
Jeff, this guy. Let's put this guy in. Pretty straightforward. This part goes into that hole right there. Okay. Let's go, Butterfingers. And then there's actually a slot right in here. So the pin just goes and fits right into that slot. So that's that. Now we have this guy. Usually a pain in the ass to put back in, but I'm feeling it in front of the camera. We're gonna knock this sucker out. Put it that side in first and put pressure right there. Remember, when this thing goes all together, I'm gonna to be keeping special attention to this piece right here. Sucker, thought it was gonna be easy. Jinx myself. There we go. Almost. It's kind of an awkward piece to put in. There we go. Okay, so once I got that there. I'm gonna put my finger there to make sure it's not going anywhere. Turn it upside down. That's where your hoo goes. Slide lock, release spring, slide lock and release spring. Put your thumb on top of that, hold that where it's at. Get this baby ready. And now you got your, make sure that pin's, pin's all the way flush in there. Put that piece on and now drop it back in without that spring flying out, and it shouldn't fly out, but I, but put your finger there anyway. Bitch, sorry. I'm gonna make sure this is totally, make sure this is totally flush, this part. See, that can't be like that. That has to be up in there. Now it's in the right spot. Okay, that's working. I'm not even having my pins in yet. And I can just tell you right now that trigger is working the way it should work. You can put your slide on and everything and test it right now, but we're just gonna put the whole gun back together. Okay, um, roll of tape. You gunsmiths out there are much better at that. I'm going to, every pin is gonna have like a more narrow and then a wider spot. So which one's my short one? Here's my short one. Goes right back in here. Rear one. Don't be afraid to break your gun down. Just don't ever force anything and try not to lose anything. Use white towels like this. Piece of plastic over it even if you're unsure. If it pops off, it'll hit the plastic and land again versus flying off to the other side of the room. Okay, now I just want to make sure they're good to go. Yep, that's all good. Now putting this back in, see you have that little, the crazy spring that I held in place. This has to go in there, but you don't want to just push it straight in there because you don't want to bend that spring. I've never bent one, but it doesn't look healthy to really put that in that way. So I put it in at an angle like that and I pry it and then push it in. There you go. Let's do this. Okay, so hold this. I have another stock gun over here. I'm gonna show the trigger of this to compare. All right, stock strike one from a customer just came in. And let's compare them. Let's clear it. Good to go. Okay. Right there, there's no, no take up.
just reset. Actually, it didn't even reset just now. Now it's reset. That trigger has to come all the way out for it to reset. Poor trigger. Here's the take up, right there. And we're ready to go again. And this is probably about half, maybe almost half. That's about six and a half, this is four pounds. About, it's what it feels like. 